You are now tuned in to the Cosmic Combos Podcast, your number one source for accurate, relevant, and thought-provoking astrological conversations in the podcast nation, the place where stars and minds align. Peace, you are now tuned into the Cosmic Combos Podcast. I'm your humble host. Herut, and we got the man of the hour, Brother Ra, how you doing? Oh, brother, beautiful, 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 never better. How about yourself? How about yourself, King? No complaints, man, no complaints, man. I'm, I'm busy, you know, as all get out, but, you know, I wouldn't have it no other way. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> you ain't no reason for anybody to be bored ever. Yeah. Ever. Indeed. So how's that daughter doing? How's that daughter doing? How's your baby girl doing? Man, she's she's thriving. <laughs> she's thriving. Moving fast. You know, um just mentioning earlier, man, you know, she she's officially si- sitting up on her own. <laughs> right, and where's that Mars at? St. Cap is 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 squaring her natal Mars, so <laughs> it's pushing back. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, she's just Beautiful thing. Yeah, she's a trip. She's a, she's gonna be a trailblazer. <laughs> already, already. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, but uh, before before we get too far, I want to remind you all that this podcast is brought to you by Push It Forward Media Group and Calaparusha Astrology, and our good old patrons on Patreon. Um, man, special shout out to the patrons, man. Everybody. I mean, we we definitely been seeing some increased activity there, indeed, and we definitely appreciate that. I want to shout out our newest patrons, um, Hater Anufra and Saturn's Girl. We definitely appreciate you all coming to show us love. Um, hit us up on Patreon, and you know, um, let us know, you know, your thoughts and your, you know, what you. You know what's on your mind in regards to the podcast and everything like that. You know, um, and then definitely shout out to all of our, you know, um, our, um, you know, our core um, Patreons that's been there. You know, Ankma High, um, Yama Sheps, Kinemeti, and uh, the brother Ajala. Um, appreciate you guys. Um, you know, helping us. You know, take this podcast to the next level. You know, and the more. And more, you know, engagement and involvement we get from you all, um, the better we'll make this podcast. Absolutely. Um, Brother Rod, how you feel about this, uh, you know, the, the, the feedback and things we've been getting from the patrons and everything like that? Uh, excellent feedback. Excellent feedback. Uh, everything seems to be... Uh really moving in a direction where people are absorbing the information and really um, able to um, bring it into some understanding. So that's my thing is if you get something out of it, if you get uh, if you get a gem or something you can use and go research and, 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 and play with it, do that. That's what I'm here for. So by all means, I, I'm appreciating the feedback. I haven't heard much from the ladies. On the last feet on the last show. In fact, I haven't heard anything from the ladies. Usually, I will hear something in regards to the podcast uh, from from the female uh, side of the sh- uh, the the, uh, the audience. But uh, definitely, y'all let us know. You know, um, we're here to hear what you have to say. Um, this is this is a podcast uh, for you know the edification. Of, of people that are really trying to delve deep into this, this science. So, ladies, let let us know if you felt you were um, represented well, if you felt you have received information that might give you some indications of what to look for internally and externally in relationships. Let us know. You know, we always want to hear feedback 
especially from our female uh, part- uh participants indeed indeed we we got some um got some traction on um you know social media with the um the last podcast um you know but it, it, mostly in support you know i had we didn't get any i didn't see any uh I didn't see any pushback um I, 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 no, I didn't think we would get any. I just thought we would have the ladies. Y'all would have a little more um, something to say because during the one that we did on the uh, soulmate, um, yeah, they came in droves, right? Yeah, I got a lot of feedback on that. So just wondered, you know, and the time will tell. You know, this podcast will filter out, and I'm sure uh, as they make their way out to the to the public, we will uh, we'll get some some information from. Or get a pulse check from the people. And, you know, it's a, it's a slow build, too. I mean, like, I mean, we got people. I mean, people are, are, are going and listening to last season. They binge listening. So, you know, um, you know, sometimes we just pop up one meet, week, week and get a whole bunch of comments on episode 23 from last season. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, it, it works out that way. Sure. It does. Indeed. It does. Um. But yeah, you know, um, as far as, uh, you know, what, what's, what, what brings you this, um, this podcast, you know, um, you can find Push It Forward Media Group on Instagram at Push It Forward, P-U-S-H-I-T-F-W-D. Um, find us on the web, um, same handle, pushitforward.com. Um, you know, um, you can follow us on Instagram. Follow this podcast on Instagram as well at Cosmic Convo. Um, you know, you can hit us hit us up there. You can get a link to all of the different little um, outlets that we're on um, from there as well. Um, Brother Watt, um, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, you can basically hit me up on the Kyla Perusha Astrology at gmail.com. Uh, you can hit me up either on Facebook or IG at Shechem Ra. Uh, the tag should be the same on both of those. So uh, any one of those will definitely get at me. Good deal, good deal, good deal. Um, so yeah, you know, um, we're here. You know, last episode. Um, you know, we we want we wanted some more interaction from our uh, our, our our sisters out there, our, our women listeners out there. But we still got a lot of numbers look good. Um, you know, a lot of uh, positive feedback in general. So that's always a plus and whatnot. Um. But we also got a couple of questions that came in. You want to answer a couple of questions? Yeah, let's do that. All right. So um, this is a, a question from one of our patrons. And um, basically, uh, the brother wanted to, you know, get a little bit more, wanted a little bit more insight into, in addition to K2, you know, how can someone approach finding out details of a past life in regards to, you know, specific career, you know, the type of person they was in their past life. And they also asked, um, if we could do a journey to the past life, um, episode part two on the podcast at some point. What's your thoughts? Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, everyone, uh, you know, it's a very, uh, it's very plentiful uh, as far as the number of people that really want to know their past lives. And, you know, understandably so. I mean, we kind of all want to know what we did and where we were and who we were. Um, you know, and the astrology, <clears throat> let, let's say this, there are blind spots, folks. Um, the only person that really can truly see well, your past life ultimately is you. I mean, you have some people that are extremely spiritually spiritually developed. Um, they operate, um, you know, on all chakras, right? So they can pretty much. I mean, I'm talking about sages, gurus, um, people that are really highly developed. Those kind of people, they absolutely can peer past the karma shaya, which is the the kind of um, spiritual um, block that doesn't allow you to peer past 
your 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 past lives and for good reason i mean if you think about it how much would you get done if you knew that in the past life you were hitler <laughs> how much would you get done in the past life you knew you were genghis khan if you knew you were um uh, uh, uh imhotep if you knew you were um I'm in Hotep the Third. I mean, your mind would be filled, right, with constant thoughts of the past life. You'd be looking for people that are no longer there. You no longer see. So it would be torture in essence. In fact, it's very compassionate that the Supreme Being and its infinite wisdom blocks those certain things for us being able to pierce past that veil. Because then you literally would begin to be consumed by that life and then of course you would probably want to know the next and the next so uh, for good reason right uh, we are not able to see into those aspects of reality however in a chart there are always things that you can use to gauge on um, the past life and the whole chart really in and of itself is a composite picture of your past life I meaning it, it is this life but everything that you've accumulated your proclivities your tendencies uh, likes, dislikes, and so forth, all way, all have all accumulated up until the point in which you were born. That point, that date, time, and place, right, is very specific to you. So that means that at that stamp point, time of entry, all of that is your previous past life karma. So if Saturn is in the tenth house, you have a past life karma of obstructing others from from climbing to success. So now you have to learn the lesson of obstructions. And climbing the ladder of success. So it's always relative. The sun is your soul. Your soul doesn't flip flop like a bird. And go from this that and the other right. It's very much. Um, who you are at the core of your being. Well if your sun is let's say in Virgo. Right. You are very much at the core of who you are. And in your previous lives. Where normally someone is analytical. Um, very uh, much detail oriented. Very much pessimistic worry can be a worry ward not understanding how to unburden your soul <clears throat> and so this life is here to teach you the lessons to come to that self-realization of learning how to self to master right not only the ability to help others but the ability to help yourself so at some point in the past you were that type of individual to yield these types of 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 conditionings so it's just a pick up to where you left off you're con continuing your spiritual journey. So when you look at a chart, of course, K2 is always going to reveal like the connection where you poured in from your past life. So if it's K2 in the second house, right, you're pouring in to the fact that you're now here to learn to explore the unknown and to leave your old value systems and your family's value systems behind. Meaning in the past life, you were overly focused on values, overly focused on family, overly focused on the need to sustain yourself. And so now the Rahu in that new paradigm, that new reality for this individual is to come out of that comfort, the comfort zone of the second house, the, the kind of embryonic state of mind as a being in that childlike, childhood, um, childhood like condition, which is all the second house, right? That means the person's going to grow up very unstable right the life is not designed to be stable because they were overly stable right so you can say well last life i was really stable last life i had the ability to uh, financially do x y and z i was there for my family i feel like i'm there for my family but i also feel like i i kind of am letting i can let go that's how you know that's that bridge point between the past and the present so wherever K2 is, absolutely. But wherever those other planets are, Saturn, Sun, those are also indications of past life um, deeds and actions, or lack thereof. So um, I hope that kind of elucidates a little more. We can always go into depth because K2 is, K2 and Rahu is such a, is such a vast subject, right? Um, we have to know where their rulers are and the lords of Rahu and K2, where they're placed. And those things, those are all filter into past life stuff. So, you know. Really studying astrology deeply gives you a really good understanding of your personal um, kind of what you come with type deal. That's what the astrologer is there to do to show you, hey, you came in with this, right? And so you're trying to leave on a better note, on a higher note to take those faculties and placements and make them better. 
make them more refined and elevate them. So to do a show, a whole show on it probably would be really to do a class because we then would have to start to explore what those specifics look like. So K2 in the first, K2 in the second, and so forth, K2 in Aries and Taurus and so forth. So really, if you're interested, folks, hit me up. Uh, we'll do a class, you know. Uh, we'll create something to kind of link in online. I actually, of course, already teach classes, but if there's something that you really want, uh, get people together, uh, tap their shoulders, say, hey, Brother Ra would offer a Rahu K2 class uh, to explore uh, past life connections and uh, present life um, challenges. Hit me up, and we'll definitely uh, we'll, we'll set it up. Right, so that would be the best way to get the real information you're looking for in that regard because it's just so far removed from just an hour, hour to hour and a half to be able to explain those things. But I hope that kind of maybe gives a little bit more information on what you can use in a chart to gauge kind of what you're looking at in regards to uh, what you bring in with you, if you will. Indeed. Indeed. All right. So hopefully that, uh, you know that's a satisfying answer for you right there um next thing is really honestly this is just a comment man somebody on um instagram just pointed out something for us um you know basically what he said he said um um i'm watching the war declared in the sky um episode and when y'all mentioned that pluto into cap goes into Cap capricorn on february 21st was going to bust up big business it is absolutely on point the three major stock indexes all dropped exactly on february 21st <laughs> wow science to a t man yeah science to a t and here's the thing here's the thing if what we are promoting isn't real then according to western astrology Pluto would be at 20, would have been at 24 degrees on that day. So there wouldn't have been any major shifting or changing or really anything because 24 degrees is actually not even in the zone of the cusp of a sign. So I don't know. Just things to ponder, things to look at when you're looking at the actual positions versus positions that are uh, arbitrary or contrived for another date and time mm -hmm. and place so these are things that we use to cre create conviction and stand on the science as it is because everything as like you said as above so below if that date february 21st reveals a major change and shift in world markets that the, the only time you really notice the changes are when major things happen. So when a planet changes a sign, you'll notice. When retrogrades happen, you'll notice. When conjunctions or oppositions happen, you'll notice. These are these are pressure points in the, in the sky. So when these pressure points hit, when something leaves from one section of the sky to another section or another sign, then boom, automatically, right? There is a pressure point, pressure and release point at that at that junction so this is just to show that what we're practicing really is what it is but you know to each his own indeed yeah i mean you know um i made a post this past week um i saw that i saw that a tough excellent post yeah. yeah i mean it was you know out here where i'm at it was just it was a super clear night you could see venus just brightest day sitting right there and then you look at the moon you can you can see you can see them sitting in the constellations like <laughs> just, just here I am right yeah. just here I am right look at me this is it <laughs> uh, you can't don't try to guess just look <laughs> right I mean it's, it's that simple man you know our, our ancestors were very practical people as well as very spiritual deep people so mm -hmm. by all means you know as above so below indeed indeed so um yeah man um you know. We appreciate all the questions and the feedback. Um, keep them coming. You know, indeed. So, um, with that being said, today's show is 
it's a, it's a Patreon show. Um, this basically came in from one of our uh, good patrons, um, Kinemeti. Shout out to you, right? Um, you know, he sent us a pretty healthy message, but uh, <laughs> you know, overall, what we pulled from it is um, definitely the um, the desire to um, explore, you know, uh, you know, the mother continent of Africa some more. And some of the, you know, different elements playing out uh, with them. So uh, this this one is um, definitely inspired um, from our interactions, you know, indeed. So, um, brother Rob, where uh, where where are we gonna go with this today? Oh man, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to. Uh, a place that is very um, newsworthy, if you will. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it gets a lot of publicity. It gets a lot of um, um, it, you know, they say <laughs> uh, even if it's negative bad news, it's still news about you, right? And a lot of it circles around a country that is um for the most part, a power structure in Africa. Yeah. Um, and f- I mean, in fact, uh, let's talk about it. Uh, we're we're going to delve into uh, Nigeria. Um, and uh, it's one of the three countries that kind of were presented. Uh, Ghana is one that, for the most part, is getting a lot of actual great publicity uh, because of the repatri- repatriation process. Um, and, uh, a lot of them, a lot of the, um, just a lot of people are just really going back to Ghana to really reconnect and they really don't have a very negative kind of, uh, light on them, but it's very positive and for good reason. Mm -hmm. Um, well, Nigeria is a little different and, uh, not to say Nigeria, and I love Nigerians, right? Don't get me wrong. People in the country are beautiful. I have a lot of Nigerian friends. Um, but uh, let's talk. So Nigeria has a long history, right? Um, very, very long. I'm talking about all the way back to uh, 1500, 2000 BC, right? Um, in fact, uh, there's a few cultures that come after that um, within the uh, early between early 800s all the way up to 1800s really is the not culture, um, which is really what you would consider or what I would consider Nigerian culture proper. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's a schism in the, in the development of the country um, from that culture, from a power source, a power structure uh, that lasted for, you know, hundreds, probably thousands, if not thousands of years, but hundreds of years at least, um, we're talking slavery, right? This is when the shift of the country began to really uh, take a toll. And so, um, of course, Great Britain, right, had its hands all over and through, right, Nigeria. Uh, So did France. Uh, So quite a few countries, right, um, had a foothold on Nigeria for quite some time. And uh, from right around the 1800s, from the onslaught of slavery, um, of course, we have uh, the Berlin Conference. Many of you don't know what that is, but the Berlin Conference is when Europe, right, and see, slavery is one thing, folks. You have to understand, this is something that we're dealing with of a whole nother nature. Slavery is just the tip of the iceberg. When you're talking about the Berlin Conference, the Berlin Conference is when the European nations got together and decided to stop fighting with one another long enough to to decide who and what was going to have different pieces and parts of Africa, meaning how we're going to divide up the pie. And so not only did they create the institution of chattel slavery, now they created an institution of colonialism. And so colonialism has been a bedwinch, right? A, uh, a, a stepsister, if you will, evil stepsister to the Nigerian people. Yeah. Right. And 
um, the three major religions there, Christianity, Islam, and of course, indigenous um, practices, right? Well, the first two, right, were there, brought there through, right, slavery um, and colonialism. So, considering all of the different type of um, infectious mindsets that they've been introduced through through colonialism, one can understand a lot of how um, when something has been given, as much given as much required. And <clears throat> Nigeria has a very um, it's a gift to it, right? In the in the sense of resources, but we'll talk about that in a second. So, <clears throat> considering right the foundation date, right, um, independence date for Nigeria is October first, nineteen sixty, uh, and so understanding the imports of this, um, considering right, this is an independence that's from uh, Great Britain, and the strange thing is that. During that time, when they became so-called independent, the queen still ruled, right? Yeah. She still was in power. And so, I mean, really, you didn't get much independence. So, um, a lot of tumultuousness in this time. A lot of, I mean, considering this is the 1960s, this is a civil rights movement simultaneously happening. So there's a lot of different changing um, tides in the uh, world atmosphere. And so 1960, October 1st, you know, Nigeria, as we know it, is born. Yeah. Now, I, there is, I'm sure, conjecture, as there always is in astrology. Different astrologers have different tools, different purviews, different insights, and respectfully so. But I had to kind of rectify this uh, rectification is when we take a chart and isolate certain things events and um happenings to to find a very if not the time a very close time of birth and um for the most part right most countries aren't keeping a tally of the specific time when they started or began their country but we can get a consensus of number one, the day that the country is is birthed. So October first, if we go to midnight, right? We start at midnight. Well, no country is birthed at midnight, so we can eliminate from midnight to right around eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no one's creating a country at six a.m. in the morning, right? It just doesn't happen. So we can say, well, between eight to five, right? It's a safe time to assume. Um, eight to six, even considering um, different cultures, different people, different ways, different cultures. Some cultures actually start later, right? Like in um, Europe, some they start a little later in the day and have siestas and end later in the day. But still, in all, right? No country is founded right when the sun is setting either, right? And October 1st puts us right around, uh, what, seven days after the equinox? So the day and night is pretty equal at this time. And so we know that, well, <laughs> the day and night is equal. Good chance that it uh, wasn't seven or six o'clock when they were doing the inauguration or creating the country. So we can slide back and forth between eight to four ish, five ish, right? Even six years. Well, using kind of the slide rule and picking up each ascendant, uh, we will start off at uh, right around with Libra ascendant as right around, let's see, between eight, eight-ish, nine-ish, right? And then moving into Scorpio between 9.30 to right 11.30. And then moving into um, Sag, right, from 11.30 to 1.30. And then from Sag to Cap, right? And then from Cap, to Aquarius, and we'll stop there because, for the most part, that's where it kind of left off time scale wise. Mm -hmm. So, looking at the different ascendants, right? I'm not going to go through and list of all the things why and whatnots, but we can narrow it down pretty well between two ascendants primarily Scorpio and Capricorn. 
or we can eliminate Capricorn very easily because the moon would be in the ascendant if it were a Cap ascendant. And any time the moon is in the ascendant, women are a primary, prim, a primary constituent of that individual slash nation's life. And the moon is not one <laughs> that we can consider as the nation's kind of uh, point of activity or focal point, uh, if you will. Or they don't even, uh, in other words, the identity of a country is also the first house. There's no identity there that would even reflect that. Mm -hmm. But, so eliminating cap, Sagittarius is not the ascendant at all, right? Because it would then create a whole different purview of laws and things like that. Just kind of like America has, has a Sag ascendant. Any Sag ascendant is going to have a, a upright disposition, meaning they're going to show their uprightness, even though they may be very corrupt, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Nigeria doesn't care, <laughs> right? They don't care about showing any uprightness. It is what it is, right? Um, and so the scorpion ascendant fits best. Uh, I pegged it right around 1132. You probably could go a little earlier, right? But I would say right around 1130-ish, I'm saying latest 1132 is when we would say that the country is formulated. And it makes sense, rightfully so, because that is right before lunch, right? Um, a lot of people have already congregated at this point by this time. Um, things are moving, things are shaking, things are um, are changing and grooving. So, uh, strong Scorpio ascendant, right? Um, you could lean maybe even, you know, but again, it's pushing it. Uh, I'd say maybe possibly Aquarius, but again, that's pushing it. But let's go into exploring what this chart looks like and why we would say this. So, first of all, right, as we stated, the ascendant itself is the actual identity of a chart of a nation of a person well scorpio kind of has a a bad rap and it's the most powerful sign of the zodiac but it's also is it's the most heavenliest and the most heinous right and it really takes a strong placement and a strong chart for a Scorpio ascendant to be to do well in the spiritual sense of the word. Mm -hmm. And so because they have a Scorpio ascendant and I'm putting him at 29 degrees Scorpio, uh, their ascendant lord is in Gemini. Meaning, what does that mean? The ascendant lord is in the 8th house. This means that the onset of the country, the birth of the nation Right, the beginnings of the, of the um, borders, what we call Nigeria, right, is very tumultuous. Yeah, and we know this because the eighth house is the house of reformulation and and transformation, right, and rebirth. Mm -hmm. So we have a birth, then a what? Rebirth. Yeah. Right. Inside of a inside of the actual beginnings of the nation. So this shows very strongly that this is Scorpio Ascendant with the Ascendant Lord in the 8th house in Gemini. Now, again, let's go deeper. The Ascendant Lord, and this is called a Loch Ness, folks, right? Wherever the Ascendant Lord is, it's crucial, right? It's the, called the Loch Ness. It's a very specific way we look at the chart to give us where that person's niche is found in life, where they find their, their kind of their, their groove in life. And the 8th house is a house of tumultuous and it's a topsy turvy place. So, considering, right, Nigeria starts off, right, with two different groups, right? Niger Nigerian People's Congress and also the Action Group. And there's all the stuff that you can find online. Internet stuff is out there, it's free information. So, I get a book to go research this. It's very much common knowledge. Yeah. But even inside of that, there's. There were different factions fighting and vying for control. The Hausa, the Fulani, the Igbo, mm -hmm. and also the, um, the Yoruba. Mm -hmm. right? So these are all different factions in the beginning vying. Muslims, Christians. Right? Oh, Muslims, Christians, indigenous, mm -hmm. 
So it's a topsy-turvy kind of mixture, if you will, of things that are trying to manifest. Right? And so a country is trying to be born, become born, become something, right, to bring itself into a manifestation. And so that is hard to do when you have such a topsy-turvy kind of tumultuous beginning. And not only that, going deeper into their beginnings, into the beginnings of the Nigerian nation, uh, you had two sides that eventually separated, one called the Southern Cameroons and one called the Northern Cameroons. Uh, the Northern Cameroons wanted to remain Nigeria and the Southern Cameroons wanted to rejoin the Republic. And a civil war ensued. Right? And so um, having a civil war from 1966 to 1979 shows that six years after the beginning or the onset of the country, they were at war with themselves. That shows the ascendant lord in the eighth house, bar none. Hmm. Right? One to three million people died in that war. That's a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, these are back to back military coups. <laughs> Right, back to back. That's in one country. I mean, we we t- talking country. about coronavirus right. hat technically, you know, hadn't even reached a number like that, and you see the the reaction, the the the, the devastation. Yeah. Right. So imagine one million Africans dead. This is, I mean, you, you, this is like swept under the rug. You don't even hear about this, right? One to three million people dead. That's a lot of bodies, right? And considering. Right. Then let's look at the let's look at the country for a second. Right. Let's just take a sidebar. The country is the largest country in Africa by population, not by size. Yeah. Right. Two hundred and three, two hundred and two, two hundred and three million people in the country of Nigeria. That's a lot of people. It's the seventh largest nation in the world. That's big. Yeah. Well, how do you see that in a chart? Well, let's look. The second house, right, is kind of like family, right, values, but it's also the beginnings. And it's also, right, kind of like the where you would look to see as to what the potential of the second house is potential. It's all potential, right? Is there is it an expansive way that they can can they expand? Absolutely. Because Jupiter is in its own sign. Right. And not only that, the fourth lord, which also represents the homeland and generally the people at large, is also conjunct Jupiter in Sag in the second. So conjuncting Sag is expansive, growth, large, massive, big, right? A lot of people. So you can see clearly, right, as you begin to go into the chart, that this is the chart for the country. Now, a lot of stuff going on, right? The biggest theme that comes about with regards to Nigeria is corruption, right? And the eighth house is the house of corruption, <laughs> bar none. Scorpio is the sign of corruption. <laughs> so you can't really escape, right, the fact that this is their chart for the simple fact that it's a dead ringer on every level as far as their identity is concerned. Now, going deeper into right this whole thing, right there they started off right in a um, in a uh, Mars, Mars Dasha. Dasha period, right? Mars Dasha. What does that say? <laughs> I'm just saying, right? You start off at war. Yeah. <laughs> it's just repetitiously the same theme, right? That's called confluence. When you see one, two, three, four, five different factors all pointing to the same thing. Right. So, Scorpio Ascendant, right? Now, right, here's the thing. You want to know if a country is really, it's like, okay, well, how do you house what we tell, Ra? What, what, what else will we look for? Well, one thing we can look for is the money, mm-hmm. right? Because the money always tells, right? How a structure, uh, how a, a nation is structured. Well, Nigeria is a very wealthy nation when it comes to oil and natural gas, right? 
And this is shown in the chart by Saturn being in the second house. Saturn is oil. Saturn is anything that's dark, black, right? That black gold, right? Y'all remember Beverly Hills? <laughs> Billy, right? <laughs> right? That black gold, right? That oil. That's in the second house of resources. And it's conjunct Jupiter in its own sign. Bar none is this th their chart. Right. Um, Jupiter, expansion, second. And, and here's the thing. In the text, in the Shastras, y'all, it says when Jupiter is in the second house, that person will be wealthy. Now, people say, well, I know a lot. You have to look at everything, considering. But the second ruler is in its own sign. That is a almost pretty close guarantee that you're gonna have some resources, at least early excuse me, early on. <clears throat> in your in the initial onset of the country. Well, of course, they still have the resources. In the nineteen seventies, this is when they joined the um, OPEC oil boom. Right. And so joining the OPEC oil boom gave them immense amounts of wealth of wealth. But what do they do with the wealth? Well, we can see in the chart what they do with the wealth because not only does the chart reveal it, but of course, kind of, you know, the world at large reveals to show that they are not investing those resources into oil, into the infrastructure. And you can see that in the chart because K2, right, is in the fourth house. The fourth house is your infrastructure. Your homeland, right? The core of your nation, right? The centerpiece of what you're doing, what you have a nation for, is the fourth house. It literally is home. And so the K2 being there shows that the infrastructure receives no help. The infrastructure, the people at large, meaning the core of the country, right, has no real. Re uh, reciprocity in it. It's very much imbalanced. Wherever K2 and Rahu are, they create imbalances. Mm -hmm. So it's imbalanced on the deficit side in the fourth house and the surplus side in the tenth. The tenth house is government itself. So you see, this is to show this is the chart of Nigeria. And we have to do this to establish further points. We could talk about any type of future activities to know about what technology might be looking like for them in the next 10 to 20 years. But we have to establish the veracity of their chart first. Now, going deeper in, right? Talk about marriage, right? Marriage is always seen in a chart, in a mundane chart, via Venus. Even in a regular chart. And Venus is in its own sign. Right? So it... In, in 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 the general sense of the word, this is good because Venus being in his own sign gives it some strength. It stabilizes it, right? So it means that marriage in and of itself is an institution that is very much a part of the nation's infrastructure. However, it's in the 12th house, right? And it's conjunct Mercury, which Mercury rules the 8th house and also rules the, 12th, the 11th. Well, being an 8th house ruler, again... This also brings corruption. Um, it can bring um, um, imbalances. It can bring excesses, right, in regards to marriage. And many of the marriages that are formulated in Nigeria are polygynous. Um, but they're polygynous in a different way. It's not polygynous as like what a lot of Western uh, or African in America, try to practice this in polygyny. You know, this is the real deal. Um, it's really polygyny where they don't have much choice in how this thing kind of unfolds. Um, and so this is this is shown by Venus being conjunct the eighth lord. So again, right, showing further that this is the chart of Nigeria. Now, looking at the Dashas in 1999, right, they so-called had a return to democracy well what planet is the do you know what planet the, you know what is the planet of democracy saturn yes sir 
and they entered a Saturn Dasha into a Saturn Dasha period in 1998. Saturn is a slow, slow. So when you get into his Dasha, the first year you usually don't feel anything unless Saturn has some serious placements in your chart. This is very slow. It's a kind of a cumulative effect. So at the after the first year or so, then democracy were and reins so called reinstated uh, in Nigeria. And so looking at that again shows that a Dasha period change and ta- and then simultaneously a cultural slash political change gives you the keys to know that this is the chart that you're looking at. Um, Saturn, right, is in the second house. <clears throat> so they're trying to really change the face of their country, right? Saturn, the second house, is the face of anything you're dealing with, right? So they're trying to do constructive surgery or reconstructive processing on this, but, you know, it's hard to do, right, considering that, you know, the infra- the, the the inception of the country was founded in so much tumultuousness and it's very hard to change the perception of a corrupt nation but uh, they are known to be such Um, but they do have vast amounts of resources now this the country is governed by right um, the leadership the the government and so the sun in a chart along with the 10th house is the government well, the government is me- focused on making money. <laughs> How do we know this? Because the sun is in the 11th house yeah. of gains. But where do those gains go? <laughs> they don't go to the people. No. <laughs> right? <clears throat> right? Because the 11th lord, which is the lord of gains, goes to the 12th house of loss of self-undoing. Spending money. Right? Putting it out. Right, living the life of opulence because it's conjunct Venus, right? But for the leaders, not for the people. Mm-hmm. So again, showing the dispensation of karma through this nation. So knowing that, right now we can talk about a little bit more of future type perspectives as far as Nigeria is concerned. And one thing we're going to notice here very soon in the next six months is that Nigeria is going to go through a financial crisis, meaning they're going to go through a reorientation of their own identity to the point where it will humble them to some degree. K2 will be transiting into uh, their first house with, uh, within the next four months. Uh, September 23rd will be... Oh, yeah, four months. September 23rd will be when um, K2 and Rahu will change positions, change signs. And so... Uh, their ascending degree, I have it at 29 degrees, 13 minutes. Uh, it may be 28, 59, little before, little after. But nonetheless, it's right at that, that cusp of 29 degrees. And so what that even also says is that uh, the country itself is overwhelmed, meaning that they're on a gandanta point. The ascendant's on a, what's called a gandanta point. Gandanta means to drown. Right? And drowning just is another way of saying becoming overwhelmed. So they literally are overwhelmed as a nation, right? Because they cannot handle their own infrastructure. How do we know? K2 coal rules Scorpio and it's in the fourth in an enemy sign. So again, showing, right? That uh, this is by far the nation. So what else do we notice, right? In transit. So Saturn, right? is going to be entering in, well, it's actually natally, it's in the third house now, right? Um, and it's going to go backwards. It's going to go retrograde March, for, uh, May 14th uh, next week. So when it goes retrograde, it will go back into the second house, and then it goes back into the third house when it completes its retrograde process. This back and forth between the second and third house really shows a lot of dealings with resources and trying to uh, really stave off any type of um, um, uh, financial, um, uh, I say a strenuous, a strenuous, but the third house is a house of courage, 
So whenever Saturn transits between the second and the third, there's a battle between resources and implementing or using those resources. And at the same time, when K2 is conjuncting or transiting that 29th degree, the real reason, real issue is to now have to come and tap into the resources to manage things versus it becoming versus it coming in uh, like a free for all because the economy is changing worldwide. Oil is at a rock bottom. Yeah. Right. Dirt cheap. Right. Literally, they're selling. Literally, folks, they're paying people to take the oil. <laughs> literally. I mean, look at the news. They're paying people. I'm sure it's changed probably in the next last three weeks when this was reported. Because, of course, the, the country is moving somewhat again. But still in all, gas prices are still fairly low. And this is worldwide. So this change in paradigm is going to tap Nigeria majorly. They're going to have to rethink uh, their, st their, their strategies. Because if you're... A, a country that's based on oil and OPEC is your best friend and OPEC is hurting right and the people start hurting it's, 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 it's almost setting it up for another coup d'etat or a revolution yeah um, if in essence because K2 is moving to a point where it's going to square NATO K2 and Rahu is going to square NATO Rahu so this creates like this cross this cross that they're nailed to, if you will, and they can't escape it either way. So it's almost to the point where they, either you change or something's going to change you. And I can guarantee you, in the next year, you're going to hear news about them either going through some infrastructure, re re restructuring infrastructure, or some coup d'etat or something that will um, change the face of how they're seen. All right. Uh, technologically speaking, they're actually pretty. They're pretty low on the totem pole. I mean, gr granted, when you have resources, your 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 country always is going to do a little bit better than the neighboring countries, considering. But they don't pour the money back into the, re the infrastructure. So, I mean, it's kind of a catch twenty two. You get money, but then you don't use it properly, and so, eventually, eventually, as time moves in here, look, Pluto. Is in Capricorn, right? Pluto is in the third house. Yeah. Right now. That destroys the country's ability to push forward. Really test their mettle for the next 21 years. <laughs> so, or 20 years. So, and this, and here's the thing the moon is in Cap. So now, moon is going to be with Cap. For the next 21 years, just generally speaking, people are going to definitely be, be turning up and going a little ham on the nation because it's, it's time for change. It's time to get rid of the corruption. And remember, Capricorn is big business. right? It's oil business, too, because it's ruled by Saturn. So don't be surprised if this whole COVID thing, the silver lining in it is. Now people have to stand up and be accountable for their for what they have, the resources that they haven't distributed. Let's 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 visualize that as an outcome of this whole transform transformative process. But in essence, right, and not only that, Uranus is uh, in a, is in Aries. That's in the sixth house. Uranus in the sixth house doesn't do well or bode well for enemies, meaning. You don't, you, they come out of nowhere, left field, right? They don't even come from the field that you're thinking. They come from someplace else, maybe even internally. Mm -hmm. Because air, the sixth house is the house of war, right? It's a house of imbalances, disease. It is the house of corruption, just like the eighth house is, right? So, right, sixth house, right, the service that they can orient towards people, right? They don't even, they can't even serve others the way they would normally, meaning that they can't even reap the rewards from the hard work that they're doing because Uranus is passing through and it's time for change. So, considering, right, these are the things that we can look for, look to, to kind of see what's going on in the next year or so with Nigeria. Now, Neptune is one planet I usually mention. 
uh, because it also represents somewhat the same thing similarly as oil. And uh, Neptune is an Aquarius, which is the fourth house. So it's kind of good in the sense that for the next 14 years, right, their, their country, the land, right, can support um, them doing the fracking or whatever that they do to milk the land of the, of the oil, right? But again, once K2 does its deal and Saturn and, and, and Pluto are all finished with, with, with the processing of this country, oil is not going to be, it'll be, a, it'll be, it'll be a mainstay, but it won't be able to stabilize them. They're going to have to reach outside of their borders into neighboring countries and hopefully, hopefully pull resources from others. But like, that doesn't look so well because Venus, the lord of the seventh house, which is kind of like your partner, ability to partner with others, is in the twelfth. Yeah. And it's conjunct the eighth. So they already are, countries don't even want to work with them either because they already looked at corrupt. They're, that's how they looked at <laughs> Literally, the, the, the people that you deal with is the seventh house, right? And the seventh house, the seventh lord, is conjunct the eighth lord. So people are already like, nah, they shady. <laughs> Unfortunately. So that's why they're going to have to change the image of who and what they are. Um, and that's not easy. It usually comes through pain, usually comes through loss, usually comes through adversity, challenges, obstacles, and so forth. But in the end, right? The country is hopefully made better, not worse, uh, through this process. So, well, really, I mean, for the most part, technologically speaking, they're behind a lot of the other countries, even though they have a lot of the resources that other countries don't have. Yeah. Right? And so, um, amazingly, you know, and this is not, you know, South Africa is different because South Africa has nuclear technology, you know that, right? Yeah. So they have a whole level of government <laughs> that far supersedes, right? Right? Nigeria, unfortunately. Um, they don't have the resources, but they do have the the technological um, advancements. So I would say South Africa probably would be the leading country of the three countries between Ghana, Nigeria, uh, and such. To say that they are, they can actually handle the next phase and the next shift of, uh, of the technological leaps that are happening. Definitely. So I, I leave it at that. Um, really start to look at the news around Nigeria. Pay attention. Um, watch companies that have st uh, major stocks. Watch all companies that are there. Watch this. Watch their stocks throughout this whole ordeal. Because when you see their stocks drop, the country's um, GDP stock uh, drops. And so when that drops, then everything drops. And so then you can begin to see the domino effect. A country that's, that's solely dependent on oil and the time when oil is becoming obsolete is a sad picture. Yeah. But you're going to see exactly what we've talked about in, in this particular podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and not to mention, not to mention, they're going to be going into a Mercury Dasha period. I know they're in a Mercury Dasha period. Yeah. Soon to be going into a K2 Dasha in 2034. So Mercury, again, rules the 8th. It rules the 11th. It's in the 12th. Not a good time. Mm. It's, in the, it's in the 10th from the moon. Right? But the 10th, the moon is how you feel. Not what's real. Yeah. Right? So the ascending of what is what's real. You can feel one way, but people see something else. So they they feel the country feels like it's it's projecting its image properly, but they're getting flack back. So that dissonance between what they feel and what they know, what they see, right? That's when the real development for hopefully the nation will come in, and so they'll begin to match, right? Oh wait a minute, we really can't be doing that. Like, can't do the money like this. Can't do the people like this. Can't do the women like this because the women are actually disenfranchised. And that's shown because Mars is in six places from the moon, right? Anytime you want to look at the moon or see how the women of a country are treated, right? You look at the moon and look at the placements from the moon, right? So if you see Mars in six, eight, or 12 from the moon, then the, that particular um, body of people, women are usually very much ill-treated 
if you see Saturn conjunct the moon or aspecting the moon, more than likely so. The fourth house also can represent a lot of times the general um, outlay of women in the country and K2's there. Also, again, showing that <laughs> um, they're not uh, they're not appreciated. And the moon is 29 degrees Capricorn. Anytime any planet is on that line is considered marginal. And so you know what marginal means, right? You're like you're marginalized. You're not important, right? You're kept on the outskirts. Yeah. So seeing this, right? Understanding this, uh, this is the chart of Nigeria. So I'll leave it at that. If there's any comments or anything anybody wants to definitely let us know, please do. If you have Nigerian family, friends, if you're Nigerian, tap us. Let us know if you have anything that you'd like to add in uh, and uh, anything you'd like to comment on in regards to the podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, with that being said, I want to remind you all that that this episode was brought to you by Push It Forward Media Group. In Calaprusha Astrology and our and our patrons over on Patreon. Um, you know, be sure to um hit us up on all those platforms. You know, follow us at Cosmic Convo on Instagram, um, Cosmic Convo's podcast on Facebook, and um, you know, hit us up, you know, let us let us know what you think, let us know what you you know what's on your mind in regards to this um uh, this podcast and everything. And, um, you know, you go, you hit us up on Patreon. Like I said, you can get a show like this, right? This show is purely inspired by, um, you know, our patrons out there on Patreon. So, um, I think this is an excellent, excellent show, you know, excellent topic. Um, we'll definitely be able to dig into some more African countries moving forward. And, um, brother, why you got something you want to uh, say to the people before we close out? No, just uh, stay up on current events, folks. This is how you begin to gauge mundane astrology. This is how you can begin to gauge what I say. Um, great comment from the gentleman. We appreciate you, brother, on the, on the IG, showing just what we talk about, that when we see something as above, we check down below. Oh, there it is. Right, so do that with these podcasts. Do it with the nations and the companies and the things that we begin to explore, so that you can learn how to use this real time. And with that being said, I say peace. That's what it is. So uh, thank you all for tuning in, and we'll be here same same day next week, next Wednesday for uh, episode nine, and. Um, be safe out there, and we're out. Peace. Peace.